Hey, welcome back to the Ease into Retirement podcast, number 33 today. Hey, I'm Tom Mosley, your host. I promise you every week, if you'll give me up to 15 minutes, I'll do my best to build your financial knowledge. Now, we are in a series. This is episode number four of a seven-part series called The Potholes of Retirement. And what I want you to realize is the damage from potential potholes on your road through retirement can be prevented if you give proper planning and you address those potholes with proper planning. We've been through six of them so far. We've got, um, you know, eight to go. So two of them today. And as I say each time, it's really important that you understand this. And I'm going to give you an illustration later on in this podcast today. You cannot take carte blanche information you hear on the news or on a commercial or you see on a Facebook post or even on a podcast I do and run with it without getting personal information to make sure that what you see as a recommendation is really best for you. So be careful when you take the ball and run with it. Make sure it's the ball and not a keg of dynamite you're running with. It's going to blow you up. So here we go. Pothole number seven. I want to address the pothole of having to live on Social Security alone. That's all you got. I mean, the average, according to the Social Security Administration, the most recent publication they've had, the average person in America gets $1,543 a year or $18,516 a year for Social Security. Now, quite honestly, if you own your own home and you live in certain parts of the United States, like in the Southeast where I grew up, and you're willing to learn the language that they speak back in the Southeast there, and that's a joke, but if you're willing to learn that dialect that they speak, you might be able to squeak by on $1,543 if your home's paid for and everything else is paid for. But I've told this illustration before many times in my in my teaching on college campuses and in workshops and in dinner th- dinner uh, events. I've I've literally, when I was in the ministry, had people come into my office because I generally always was put in charge of benevolence, and that's when the church reaches out and helps people who reach out to them, or we reached out and helped people who didn't reach out. But I've I've had people come into my office, and they're so I, I can picture this one particular couple in Odessa, Texas, back in the early '80s, and they came into my office, and they were so almost embarrassed to ask, and they sat down, and you know I said, "So how can I help you?" And he looked at her, she looked at him. Finally, she started to speak up, and he says, "No, I'll I'll take care of this." And they were literally trying to decide whether to buy food with their money or medicine for her because they did not have enough money to buy both. So if you're in that particular situation, and they were, they were only on Social Security. And if you're in that particular situation, I mean, you are living on a fixed income. So, So how can we overcome that? What can we do to overcome that? Well, if you're still working, and you foresee down the road that that's where you're going to be. Number one, work as long as you can. Sorry. Okay. Number two, if you're still working and you're making any money, you need to number two, you need to save as much as you can while you're working because you obviously are probably making more money now than you will be making on Social Security. Number three, if you If you're going to be in that situation, you might consider rather than just straight out retiring, you might consider a hybrid retirement. It's what it's called in many places. And a hybrid retirement is where you actually work some and uh, you, you work a job and maybe it's part time. And I mean, I've got people who are still working part time and they don't have to, but they're working at Lowe's and at Home Depot and and at the Nixon Library that I've, I've talked. And they just got a hybrid retirement where they're working a little bit. They're making a little bit of money and then they're they're able to get by on their Social Security. And number four, I would say if you foresee yourself going to be in that situation where you're, you're living on Social Security alone, 
then you probably need to take Social Security as late as you possibly can take it. A lot of people think, well, I'll take it when I'm 62. The problem is, if you take it when you're 62, you're taking about a 30% haircut from your full retirement age. And from 62 until re you reach your full retirement age at either 66, 67, or somewhere in between, depending on the year you were born, the exclusion, the, the limitation right now on your income earning ability during that window there between 62 and full retirement age this year is $18,960. You can only make $18,960 or every $2 you go over that before you reach full retirement age, you give back a dollar of Social Security. Hey, folks, thank you for listening to today's episode of the Ease into Retirement podcast with Tom Mosley. Just a quick reminder that if anything you've heard so far today has hit home for you, maybe it's something you're dealing with, maybe it's just something you want to learn a little bit more about, there will be a complimentary downloadable giveaway on Tom's website specifically prepared for this week's episode that you should check out. Just go to easepodcast.com. That's E-A-S-E-Podcast.com. Click the button with the title of this week's episode and get your copy today. Now I'll throw it back to Tom. Now remember, it's not carte blanche information. About 10 years ago now, a lady came into my office. She put all of her stuff down on my desk. It wasn't 10 years ago. It was a little shorter than that. And she started crying. And I, I asked her, her name was Gladys. I said, Gladys, what's wrong? I thought maybe she'd stumbled, hurt herself, or she was just in pain or something. And she said, I did my budget last night, and I am $432 underwater. And I said, well, don't, don't worry about it. That's what you're here. Let's look at this. And so I began to pile through all the things that we asked her to bring in. And I got to Social Security and I said, well, how long have you been taking your Social Security? And she looked at me and she said, oh, well, I'm not taking Social Security yet. I said, really? She said, I went to a Social Security maximization workshop and they told me in no circumstances should I ever take my Social Security before I'm 70 years of age. And I looked and her birth date showed that she was 64 years of age. So here's a lady that literally was 400 and something dollars underwater every single month, holding off on taking $1,419 of Social Security that she could get now, and she'd be almost $1,000 to the positive. I said, Gladys, whoever gave you that recommendation wasn't considering your particular situation. I said, you need... To, my recommendation is you need to go down and turn on your Social Security. She said, you mean I can do it now? I said, yeah. She said, if I did that, I'd have almost $1,000 extra every month. I said, absolutely. Here's my point. Don't get locked into some carte blanche information you hear somewhere. Make sure that the information you you get from any kind of expert is applied to you, is specific to you, so that you don't get caught in a situation like this lady where you're following what you thought was good advice, but it was just advice that was out there and it wasn't really the best advice for you. Prod hole number seven, living on social security alone. How do you prevent the damage? You work as long as you can, save as much as you can, maybe work part-time in retirement, and you take your social security as late as you can. Pothole number eight is just one word, boredom. I cannot tell you how many people come in, they're all excited about, about retiring, they, they've worked all their life, they work five days a week, they work for 45 years, 50 years in some cases, they cannot wait to say, take this job and shove it, you know, the old country song, and just get out of there, and then two months later, they come in and they say, Tom, I am bored to death in retirement, what do I do? Well, let me tell you something, you need to plan your time in retirement and how you're going to spend your time just like you plan your finances in your retirement and how you're going to spend your retirement. And my my bottom line way 
to, to go about this is just encourage people, get a bucket list. Develop that bucket list. And if you're married, there probably needs to be two bucket lists and you need to merge those two together. And then once you get the bucket list, get busy working your bucket list. Now, a bucket list, so what's a bucket list? A bucket list is just the things you want to accomplish before you're gone. You say, what are those? Well, a lot of people want to volunteer. I know I know one lady who retired about three years ago, and I think she's volunteering four different places, four different mornings every single week. Number two, you might want to exercise. They even have, uh, if you're on Medicare and you've got Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement, you, you may be able to go to a gym with silver sneakers absolutely free. And they've got classes, and some of them are water classes, where you're not putting stress on your muscles and your bones. And uh, do exercises. Walk. Walk as a couple if you're married. Walk with a friend if you're not. Okay? Learn a new skill. Get out and learn something. That'll keep your mind sharp as well as your body sharp. Learn a new language. You say, well, I've always wanted to learn Italian so that when I go to Italy... I, I know what to order. Let me tell you, just order pizza. It's great, okay? And spaghetti. It's fantastic. And lasagna. No, well, anyway, I love Italian food and I love Italy. But you might want to learn a specific language. We'll get busy, busy doing it or develop a hobby. Now, don't try to do something and turn it into a job if you really want to look at it. If you want a part-time job, get a part-time job to keep from being bored. But do something. Get a bucket list. And you say, well, my bucket list causes me, cost me more than I can really afford. Well, guess what? Volunteering, exercising, learning a new skill, learning a new language, developing a hobby. Most of those are either no cost or really, really, really low cost. So let me tell you something. It's a pothole that can der derail your road through retirement. Boredom really sets in a lot of times. How do you prevent the damage? You develop a bucket list, maybe two if you're married, merge them or keep them individually, but get busy doing your list. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this series. It's called The Potholes of Retirement. This was number four of seven. Tune in again next week and we'll give you number nine and number 10. Hey, this is Tom Mosley, your host. I promise you, if you give me 15 minutes or today, even less around 12, I'll do my best to build your financial knowledge. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. AE Wealth Management and Mosley Insurance and Financial Services are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities, or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Mosley Insurance and Financial Services is not permitted to offer and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Mosley Insurance and Financial Services. Ed Slot's IRA Advisor Group is a paid membership educational organization comprised of professionals of varying credentials. Membership in this organization does not imply a set level of skill or training. The logo and or service mark is the property of their respective owners, and no endorsement of Tom Mosley is stated or implied. A Roth conversion is a taxable event and may have several tax-related consequences. Be sure to consult with a qualified tax advisor before making any decisions regarding your IRA.